week one of the college football season kicks off Thursday night uh, at the world's largest trailer park, williams Bryce Stadium, up there in Columbia. Uh, so what we're going to do now, and uh, and uh, me and Magnum, I think we're, this is going to be something we're going to do every week, but uh, we're going to go through some of the top games of the week. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time on each game. We're just going to, uh, you know, we'll, we'll each mention a few key points of, uh, about the game. Uh, I'll tell you what the spread is, and then me and Magnum will try to pick the games for you against the spread. So get your pen and paper out um, if you like money, because this is going to be an easy way for you to go ahead and make some. Uh, and just send Magnum and Uncle Lou 10% of your winnings, and we'll call it even. So uh, up first, Magnum, first game of the year this year. Uh, kicks off the uh, football coverage for ESPN Network uh, here on Thursday night. I think it's at 6 o'clock. Texas A&M at South Carolina. Uh, and your Gamecocks are a 10.5 points uh, favorite, sir. Uh, who you got? Okay, well, this game actually uh, intrigues me quite a bit. Uh, I've actually been keeping up with some of the the news going on between the two. And... Uh, the Texas A&M quarterback, uh, they, who they selected as their starter, his name is Kenny Hill, if I'm correct. Is that right? Is that, uh, yeah. that who? Okay. Mm-hmm. Now he's actually a uh, a dual threat guy. Uh, he, of course, he's not Johnny Manziel, but it does give Texas A&M that dual threat at quarterback once again. So it's not like they're going to have uh, a sitting duck back there. This guy, he does fit the offense. Uh, they're not going to have to really change up too much from what they did a year ago. Uh, This game, I I think, is actually going to be closer than that. Uh, I see see South Carolina winning this game, but I'm going to have to to take Texas A&M on the spread because I think South Carolina only wins by three to four points. I think A&M is going to make this game a lot closer than what people think. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's an interesting theory there. Uh, I agree with a lot of what you said about A and M. Uh, however, um, I think they're going to take uh, a bigger step backwards. I, I I think than what than what you're thinking here. Uh, I just think they lost too much with Manziel and that was uh, Mike Evans. Uh, and uh, you know they they didn't have a defense last year. I don't I don't see any reason why they will have one this year. Um, so I'm actually going to take uh, Carolina and give the ten and a half point. Uh, as much as it hurts me to say that, uh, I'll take Carolina. So you, so you have a And M on that one, uh, and I'll take Carolina minus ten and a half. Game two, uh, I picked this one out just because I think it's interesting. But Ole Miss at Boise State, uh, Boise State, a team that Georgia's opened up with. Uh, a couple of times in the past, but Ole Miss a ten point favorite here, Magnum. Okay, uh, well it's clear Boise is not the team they they once were. Uh, what's his name? Chris Peterson, head coach. He's gone. Um, th- this this is clearly not the Boise State we faced in 2011. You know, not even 2005. Uh, I'll take Ole Miss uh, on the spread. I think they'll cover um, this. I just, I just think Bo Wallace will be too much for that defense. Uh, I think Boise finished what eight and five last year. Uh, they are already on the decline. Uh, I just think that Ole Miss covers the spread and uh, may actually win by more than that. This is not the Boise we're accustomed to seeing. I actually agree. I think Boise's on the downswing, like you said, and I think uh, Ole Miss is on the come. I actually like Ole Miss and Mississippi State this year, uh, so I'll take um, Ole Miss minus ten as well on that one. Uh, sticking with the SEC theme here, uh, this game is also on Thursday. But Temple at Vandy, Vandy a 14-point favorite. Whew, 14 points. Well, uh, Vanderbilt as a 14-point favorite against anybody. Well, that, that's, that's yeah, I'm thinking that. I mean, of course, they, they lost their head coach. Uh, they lost their best receiver probably ever at that school. Uh <laughs> I'm gonna take Temple, man. I don't see Vandy. I don't see Vandy beating them by 14. I, I'm gonna to have to take Temple. Uh, yeah, maybe this is my SEC bias here, but I'm gonna give the points again and take Vandy minus the 14. Uh, I don't. I don't. I, I really don't have any re- particular reason for that, other than Vanderbilt's in the SEC and Temple's not. Uh, so I don't know. That that could go either way, I guess. But 
Uh, just since you took Temple, I'll take uh, I'll take Vandy. <clears throat> well, I mean, yeah, I, mean I, just, I, I just think that yeah, I mean, just Vanderbilt look, losing their coach and their top offensive weapon. I mean, that's two big losses, and oh yeah, I, I just sure. I just I just don't know. I, part of it too is deep down inside. I want Vanderbilt to have a good season so that when they beat Tennessee, it actually means something. So, uh, <laughs> but but anyway, this next one here is, is interesting here now. Uh, you Central Florida at Penn State, but it's not actually at Penn State. This game's being played in Ireland. I think Notre Dame played over there last year. This year, Central Florida and Penn State are playing over there. Now, I've seen a lot of weather advisories uh, as it pertains to football games in my day. I've seen snow. I've seen thunderstorms. I've seen hail. Uh, I've seen yeah, excessive heat. Uh but how about this for a weather advisory, uh, Magnum? This game could be canceled or postponed due to a volcano, sir. Uh, <laughs> since Florida was one, yeah. What? Apparently, there's a volcano somewhere near where they're playing over there, and it's expected to erupt at any, you know, any time in the next <laughs> week to ten days or something. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, uh, Central Florida is a one-point favorite over. Penn State. So who do you have in the in the Ireland Bowl? I'll take the um, volcano. Yeah, yeah. I was, just, I was actually thinking about saying that. I'll, I'll take the volcano on the spread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, actually, I'll, I'll take I'll take Penn State. I actually think Penn State's going to win that game. Uh, no, I just don't know Central Florida. I just don't see them beating Penn State. Uh, both teams have to travel overseas and I guess if you want to give a weather advantage to one of the teams it would have to be Penn State because they be in Ireland of course that they probably do get very cold over there or whatever uh Central Florida used to you know they're not used to playing in that that kind of temperature you know Central Florida is used to that sunshine and uh just the perfect weather atmosphere Penn State sees it all so I I I agree with you. I'll take. Penn I, State I'll just. I'll take Penn State. They're going to win too. Yeah. Uh, Central Florida lost uh, the best, one of the best or the best quarterback they've ever had, and Penn State has one of the best quarterbacks they've ever had returning in that Christian Hackenberg. He's got real talent. Uh, so I think Penn State actually wins this easy. Uh, yeah, but don't game, be surprised if that volcano actually comes out on top. That would be amazing. Now, if the volcano erupts, all bets are a push. So. <laughs> uh, now the next one here, a neutral site game, Ohio State at Navy. This one's being played in Baltimore, so it's basically a home game for Navy, uh, but it is on a neutral field. Ohio State um, at Navy. Now Ohio State's a 13-point favorite. That's down from 19. So this this opened up Ohio State minus 19, but now that Braxton's out, the line has moved down to 13. So Ohio State minus 13 against Navy. Who you got? Uh, you know what? I think Ohio State's going to win this game, but I'm going to take Navy on the spread. I, I think Ohio State wins this game, but probably between seven and nine points. I don't think they cover. Yeah, I'm going to take Navy, too. Uh, I think uh, besides the talent lost uh, of losing Braxton Miller, I think morally it's got to be a blow to Ohio State to lose the quarterback, uh, Heisman candidate quarterback this close to the start of the season. Uh, so uh, I think Ohio State wins, but I'll take Navy getting 13 here. Um, UCLA at Virginia. So UCLA got to fly all the way across the country, which normally doesn't bode well for teams. Uh, but luckily for UCLA, they're playing Virginia, uh, which is probably one of the worst teams in the Big Five conferences, uh, in any conference of the Big Five. Uh, UCLA is a 22-and-a-half point favorite. Uh, I'll take UCLA on that. Uh, they they got a Heisman Trophy candidate quarterback, Brett Hundley. Uh, they and this isn't the first time UCLA has done this. They've traveled across country before, so it's not like these guys have never done it. So, at, uh, uh, I mean, UCLA is way up here. Virginia is way down here. Uh, to me, this is a no-brainer. UCLA all the way. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm gonna take uh, UCLA and give the 22 and a half. So we agree there. Now, this game is probably not going to be a good game, and it probably is going to be a blowout. But I only put it on here because of what happened a couple of years ago. But Appalachian State at Michigan, the revenge game. 
Michigan's a 34-and-a-half point favorite. Now, we all remember what happened last time these two played, and Appalachian State went up there and put that whooping on them. Uh, one of the most embarrassing losses in Division One college football history, right up there with Florida and Georgia Southern from last year. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Michigan is a 34-and-a-half point favorite here at home against Appalachian State. Who you got? Okay. Well, all right. You talk about what happened before. That was in 2007. Michigan, at that point in time, was number two ranked team, if I'm not mistaken. And Appalachian State had this guy named Armani Edwards, who was a beast. They do not have this anymore. Uh, and as a matter of fact, they're not even that great of a FCS team anymore. So, um, I don't know. And Michigan's not that good either, though. You know, so 34 points, that's that's a lot for, whew, um you know what? I'm, I gotta take Appalachian State. I, I, I just don't think Michigan can cover that. Now, Michigan's not that good of a football team. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I'm gonna take Appalachian State too. Uh, I, I don't. I look for Michigan to win this, and I don't think it's gonna be anything like what we saw last time. But 30, I can't. I can't give 34 and a half. So I'm. No, gonna, I mean, I, I'll, I'm with you. I think Michigan will win this game, but I don't think they cover 34. Yeah. Uh, up next, we got another FCS uh, FBS game: Georgia Southern at NC State. NC State favored by twenty-two and a half. Uh, spoiler alert: I'm taking Georgia Southern. I'm taking Georgia Southern as well, and uh, do do it not be surprised if Georgia, Georgia Southern, Southern wins that football game. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me at all. NC State. I don't know. Uh, have you kept up with them uh, this off season? I don't know what they have. I mean, I really, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't really kept up with them. Do they have a lot coming back from last year's team? I'm not sure, but NC State's a team that's kind of like Tennessee. The less they normally, the more, normally the less you have coming back, the worse off you are. But when you're as bad as Tennessee and NC State have been, that could actually be a good thing. Uh, so, I, I but I don't really know. But just based off of these two names, Georgia Southern and NC State, I'm going to take Georgia Southern and and, I'll, and they can give me the 22 and a half points. I mean, I, even if NC State could win. I don't know, let's say 35 to 21, 35 to 14 even, and you still cover your 22 and a half. I can't see NC State beating Georgia Southern by much more than by, than, than three touchdowns. I just I don't see that happening. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I'm taking Georgia Southern here. Yeah, um, I'm with you on that. All right, and now we're coming up to some of the big ones here, but uh, – well, not really. This is going to be a cakewalk, probably. But Alabama at West Virginia. This one's being played in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome, so neutral site game. Uh, but probably be pretty much a home game from, for uh, Alabama. Uh, Alabama's a twenty-six point favorite, sir. Twenty-six points. Well, I, I'm taking Alabama. I think they'll probably win by more than twenty-six points. Uh, of course. Everybody heard my rant last week about West Virginia. That, that's a terrible football team. Um, they have no business being on the same field as Alabama. Uh, no no contest. Uh, I agree with everything you said, but I think I'm going to take West Virginia just because I, I'm a little bit worried about Alabama's quarterback situation. They still haven't named a starter. Uh so I'm not too sure what's going on uh, there, and I'm a little bit worried. I know they got uh, probably the best safety in college football, that Landon Collins, but I'm a little bit worried about their cornerbacks down there too. I know they got NFL running backs, but I'm going to – just just to make it interesting, you took Alabama. I'm going to take uh, – I'm going to take West Virginia. I do not think West Virginia is winning this game, so let me just make that clear right now. So if there's any Bammers that want, want to jump on me, there's no way West Virginia wins this game. But 26 points is a lot of points. Uh, so what the hell, I'll take West Virginia in the points. Arkansas at your second favorite team, Auburn. And Auburn is a 21-point favorite. My second favorite team, huh? Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'll i keep that in mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember you said that down the road, you know. But let, let me make this clear uh, for – for those that didn't get that sarcasm, he said that because Auburn is my most hated team. Let me just put that out there. Okay, now what what did you say the spread was again? Auburn's a twenty-one point favorite. Twenty-one point favorite. Mm. You know, 
I, I honestly, I don't know how much Arkansas has improved from a year ago. I mean, they they were they were terrible last year. Uh, and I know Auburn's going to have some people out for this game. Uh, I I think they're going to have what four people out. I think. Yeah, well, Nick Marshall's not starting, but I think he has the Johnny Manziel suspension where he only has to sit out the first quarter or the first possession or something like that because Auburn's not in the suspending business, really. Uh, well, yeah, that that is true. Uh, you know what? This uh, this is a tough one for me uh, because I, I, I do know Auburn's going to be without some folks, but 21 points. You know, I'll... I'll I, I see Auburn winning this game, but I'm going to take Arkansas. I don't. I don't think Auburn will cover 21. I'm going to take Auburn just because I, I picked them last week to win the West because I got mad at the end about something with Alabama, so I went ahead and picked Auburn to win the West and beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl. And I think Arkansas is going to be uh, is the worst team in the West. I think both the Mississippi teams uh, and Texas A&M will finish ahead of Arkansas. Um, so the 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 best team in the West should be able to beat the worst team in the West by more than 21 points. And so since I have Auburn winning and Arkansas finishing last, I guess I have to take Auburn. But um, that does seem like a high number. Uh, Idaho at Florida. <laughs> Florida, a 35-point favorite. Mm. Well, I'm telling you what, in order to cover that, Florida's offense has to come to play, which they haven't done in, it seems like, 100 years. Uh, the defense is going to have to pitch a shutout for Florida to beat anybody by 35 points. Yeah, but Idaho, they are they are a bad football team. Uh, I'll I'll take Florida. I'll, I'll, Florida yeah. win this game, and I'll I'll take them on the spread. Florida's lost seven, and they lost their last seven games last year. They didn't get to go to a bowl game. They've been mad since December. Uh, and I think uh, Idaho has to suffer the ramifications of that anger uh, next weekend. I'll take Florida and give the 35 points. All right, uh, an in-state game here, Southern Miss at Mississippi State. Mississippi State is a 30-and-a-half point favorite. Wow. Um, well, I, I do think Mississippi State's going to win this, but you know what? I'm going to take Southern Miss on the spread. I, I don't know if Mississippi State's going to cover that on Southern Miss. Yeah, I'm going to take that, too. That seems like a lot of points. Even though I think Mississippi State's going to be improved, that seems like a lot of points to give any team uh, from Mississippi. Florida State at Oklahoma State. Uh, they're playing at Jerry World there, uh, Cowboy Stadium. Florida State favored by 17 and a half here. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Florida State. Uh, I, I actually think Florida State could actually win this game by anywhere between t- 21 or 27 points. Uh, that, to me, this is this is a no-brainer. Yeah, last year Florida State's average margin of victory was 40 points against every team that wasn't in the SEC. So until uh, that doesn't happen, uh, I can't pick against them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take Florida State and give the 17 and a half, and we'll see what happens. LSU at Wisconsin. LSU favored by four and a half. This one's a neutral site game being played in Houston. LSU favored by four and a half. Wow. Okay. This is this yeah, this. This, this is matchup. hard. This is one of the toughest ones of the week, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, Wisconsin has the the Heisman hopeful at running back and Melvin Gordon. And I'm gonna tell you something. LSU lost a lot on defense, uh, and their defense really wasn't that great last year. Honestly, this could be. A big game for for Melvin Gordon. He could have like first game of the year could be a just a monster game for him, depending on how this LSU defense is. Uh, I mean, I'll I'll pick I'll take I'll take LSU, but at the same time, I won't be surprised if Wisconsin wins this game. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh... I'm going to take Wisconsin. I think LSU will win, but I think it'll just be by a couple of points. So I'm going to take uh, Wisconsin in the four and a half. Um, one, oh, uh, one thing I wanted to say about this game here. The over-under on this game is 50. I don't usually bet over-unders, but I would take the under. I would actually bet the under in this game before I bet either LSU or before I bet either side, I would take the under. 
Uh, I don't see 50 points being scored in this game. But that's the over-under if anybody's into betting. Well, okay, I can, I can see that. But at the same time, I mean, it's it's just hard to tell, especially because this is the first game because, you know, uh, LSU's defense wasn't that great last year. And supposedly LSU's uh, true freshman running back was it, uh, for, that four-net kid. Four he's, net. Supposed to be the real, he's supposed to be the real deal. So there could be some points put up in, in this game of, it's, this is just one of those very hard matchups to to try to pick apart because there's so many possibilities in a game like this. You got two. Well, we got you got one proven stud at running back and one possible. And uh, I, I'm not too familiar with Wisconsin's defense, but I do know for a fact LSU's defense wasn't that great last year, and they did lose a lot. So this is just one of those games that they, we're going to have to watch it and see how how it all plays out. This is one I'm. I'm very interested in. Yeah, this is, uh, other than the Georgia game, this is probably the game that I'm looking forward to watching the most. I think this is going to be a really good game and really could go um, either way. And one more um, interesting thing on this game, um, they're playing this game in Houston uh, this year, so technically a neutral site game, but obviously much closer to LSU than Wisconsin. Next year, these two teams play again at Lambeau Field uh, to start the season. So that'll be uh, that'll be oh. pretty neat to see a college game played at Lambeau. Wow. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. So that that well, that'll be pretty much a home game for Wisconsin. Right. Yeah. That'll be interesting. All right. Next up, a good one here, a real good one. Uh, I don't know where you're going to lean on this one, but let's let's just see what what happens here. But Utah State at Tennessee, Tennessee favored by six and a half. Take it away, sir. <sighs> Okay. Now, everybody knows how we've been ranting and raving on Tennessee. Uh, we do know that Tennessee has named a starter. Justin Worley will be the starter. Uh, that's not really saying a whole lot. Uh, we Everybody knows they lost their offensive and defensive lines, uh, of course, with a few other pieces here and there. Uh, Utah State has this stud at quarterback. Uh, what, what was it, What's his name again? Uh, Chucky Keenum or something? I can't remember. What is it? I can't remember either. I, I can't remember his name, but the, uh, he's he's supposed to be really good. Of course, uh, he was injured. He got hurt last year. I think he tore his ACL, but he's coming off a, a major injury, so I guess uh, it all depends on – there, there's no question. Uh, he's going to have to have the game of his life in order for Utah State to even win this game. Um, Tennessee, six and a half. All right. I'll pick. I'll, I'll take Tennessee on this uh, because I, 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 it's going to take more than one guy to to win a football game. You know, football is the ultimate team sport, and even if the, this this kid has the game of his life, he's going to have to have some help. Uh, and I know, I know they 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 lost a lot. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think they only have a total of seven starters returning, something like that, seven or eight. Uh, I, I think Tennessee wins this game, but it at seven points. So I'll, I'll I'll take Tennessee, but at the same time, if Tennessee somehow f- finds a way to lose this game, I'm not going to be surprised. Yeah, I'm going to take Tennessee in this game too. And like you mentioned, we've spent more, you know, plenty of time, you know, t- let, making sure everyone knows what our opinion of Tennessee is. But with that being said. And I, I know this gets me ragged on all the time, but I, I really don't care. Uh, but I am an SEC homer. When bowl season comes around, I, I, I do I root for Florida to beat whoever they're playing. I root for Carolina to beat whoever they're playing. I root for Tennessee to beat whoever they're playing. So, you know, in the beginning of the season when we have all these non-conference matchups, I do root for the SEC to win. So Tennessee should beat Utah State on any given day. Uh, and I think this is the most important game of the year for Tennessee. If if Tennessee loses this game, it's almost impossible for them to make a bowl game this year, um, and it could just wreck their entire season. If they lose to Utah State, they it's, they could possibly go two and ten. Uh, I mean, I, I really think this is the most important game of the year for Tennessee. And I think they'll show up and beat Utah State by more than six and a half. So I'll take Tennessee. Uh, and give the points. But BVD uh, and ACP 
C L M N O P Carter, whatever his initials and name is. If Tennessee loses this game, then just turn in your SEC cards because you will. Oh, we already, we already know if they if they lose football. if they lose to Utah State, they already know we're they already know it's coming. We we're gonna let them hear it. They already know. Yeah. So. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, I, we both agree we'll take Tennessee and give the points on that one. Miami at Louisville. Now, this this, this is a head-scratcher to me. And I, I know we talked a little bit about it earlier today or the other day or, or something, but Miami at Louisville, and, and I know it's at Louisville, but Louisville is favored in this game by three and a half. And I, if I wouldn't have seen the spread on this game, I would have made Miami a five- or six-point favorite. Uh, which I guess that's why I'm not a bookie. But uh, what do you think about this one, uh, Magna? Miami at Louisville, Louisville favored by three and a half. Well, I think that's exactly why they're favored by three and a half because that Louisville's going to be at home. So Miami's going to have to go on the road to start the season off. So I think that's most likely why they're favored by, th- by three. And, uh, of course, everybody knows they lost Teddy Bridgewater, so... Um, I, they, they obviously made this pick knowing that Brid, Bridgewater wasn't going to be there. So, uh, and I know uh, the Louisville got Todd Grantham as their defensive coordinator, who we pretty much ran out of town. But the thing they got, too, is uh, Josh Harvey Clemens, who was one of our safeties, he transferred to Louisville. He followed Todd Grantham. So Louisville uh, got some SEC talent on that defense. Now, I'm not really sure what they got on defense already. Of course, I haven't really kept up with them. But, um, I mean, I'll give I'll give the, the running back edge to Miami. But being Louisville being at home, uh, new defensive coordinator, and I think, I think Grantham's probably better suited in a place like that anyway. To me, he was just not an SEC defensive coordinate, coordinator. Now, he may work out. At a place place like Louisville, and they got Harvey Clemens. Mark it down. I'm I'm picking Louisville to to win this game and cover that spread. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've been listening to the guys on Kane Shays Radio and hear them talk. You know, this game shouldn't even be a contest. I'm going to take Miami. Um, they're my sleeper in the ACC this year. I don't. I didn't pick them to win. I picked Florida State, like everybody else that has a brain did. Uh, but there will be my sleeper team would be Miami. Uh, Duke Johnson is the real deal. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, Miami is loaded with athletes every year. Uh, you mentioned before football being the ultimate team sport, and when I watch Miami play, to me that's what it seemed like in the past, that they've just had a hard time getting it all to come together the last 10 years or whatever it's been since they since they were dominating. Um, but if Miami is ready to get back on the national stage, then they need to be able to go and beat a Louisville team on the road uh, who's breaking in a new quarterback, a new defensive coordinator. Um, if Miami is the Miami that they say they are, then then they go to Louisville and they win this game. Uh, so I'll take Miami and give three and a half, and we'll see what happens. And nothing makes me happier than to know that Todd Grantham and Petrino are arguing and not getting them. He's in a pod. And as far as I'm concerned, they're right up there with Urban Meyer uh, and Lane Kiffin. You know, oh, no hell. <laughs> the four of them, Lane Kiffin. Now, how how would you like to be in a room with these four? Lane Kiffin, Urban Meyer, Bobby Petrino, and Todd Grantham. Jeez. Okay, well, first off, I don't think I can handle it. Of course, Petrino, we all know what he did with the Falcons. So, you know, shit on him. Yeah, um, Lane Kiffin is just a, a dumbass. Urban Meyer is a liar who allows murderers to play. Man, I, dude, I couldn't... It, I, I could be in a room with them. Like if just put a gun to my head and end it. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, Pat- Bobby Petrino, Lane Kiffin to the Falcons before Lane Kiffining a team was even cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got you got a point. <laughs> so yeah, we can all agree that we hate the four of them. All right, and finally the last one here, and we don't have to spend them. Uh, a lot of time we both agree. Clemson at UGA. UGA is an eight-point favorite. We both think UGA wins by 10 to 14, I think we said. So I think we both agree here that UGA covers the spread here. Yeah, yeah, I think I think UGA covers it. 